Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to an amazing session that we're going to have today on Vedantu. I'm Dr. Vani Desai, and I teach biology for Vedantu. Now, uh, from what I assume now, because you've all joined a session, a webinar on uh, molecular basis of genetics, which is a class 12th topic for NEAT. I presume and assume that all of you are preparing for your NEAT examination. Let me tell you something about the topic and the examination in general initially. This is one of the most uh, misunderstood, less understood, and one of the toughest topics of class 12. If you understand this one topic properly, along with another topic called human health and disease, uh, majority of the questions which come from class 12 come from these particular topics. It's a simple topic. Let's, let me tell you right at the outset, genetics is very, very simple. It is just this, that genetics is extremely misunderstood. There is a lot of enigma which surrounds it. There are a lot of misconceptions which surround it. People don't understand it in a very simple way. So if there is something, if there's somebody who teaches you well, and if there is understanding at a very molecular level, at a very basic level of this particular topic, let me tell you, any question which comes from transcription, translation, any of the experiments which come in this topic, you will be easily able to do all the questions. Any questions which come on enzymes, any questions which come on translation, anything which comes from this topic. If you attend all of these series properly, let me promise this to you right at the outset that you will be able to answer all of them with a great amount of accuracy, right? So with that, let me start with the topic. Uh, I will try and paint a picture today, right? Try and take you into the magical world of genetics, uh, which is very, uh, from the outset, it could be, oh my God, it's tough. I don't understand how this is happening. But you need to build it up step by step. You suddenly can't go into the molecular level without knowing how the molecules came into existence, how various scientists worked towards uh, establishing their identity, trying to demystify the DNA, decode the DNA and try and build an identity towards it, right? So uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to uh, try and build up this entire, uh, uh, you know, this entire uh, genetic drama and I'm going to make it unfold in front of you. Okay, so with that, let's start today's class. Today's class, we'll just try and build up. So uh, I'll try and tell you very basics about molecules, about how they came into existence. Uh, sit with your papers and pens. I'm going to tell you a lot of extra points apart from what is already mentioned in the slides. From the slides, I have to tell you this, that it is years of research. I've been teaching medicine to pre-medical entrance students for the past nine years now. So these slides are made with a lot of experience. They are made with extreme meticulousness. So whatever is there in the slides is definitely very, very important. We have compiled data from all possible sources and served it on a platter for you. So these slides, you'll be able to take them home. You'll be able to see all these webinars, all the classes that we take. Again, also, the recordings will also be made available to you. So you should also be able to see all of them. But whatever extra points I will also tell in the explanation, I will want you. I'm going to write them here on the slide like this. I should be writing them. But I would also want you to go back home and uh, make a little note of whatever extra I am telling you. Right, everybody? So with that, welcome to a phenomenal class. Welcome to a groundbreaking class. I hope you really enjoy my classes. And come, let's enter the magical world of genetics. Yes, and with a promise that you, if there are 10 to 12 questions which come in need from genetics, we shall be able to solve all of them after we've been done with the entire syllabus. Obviously not from just one class. We'll take a lot of classes more to be able to do this entire thing, but at the end of it, we shall definitely be able to do justice to all the questions that come on it. Yes, my dear students. So with that, come, let's start. So what are the topic that we are doing? The topic is basically molecular basis of genetics, but it's written as nature of gene. What is gene? What is it made up of? What is its nature? How is the gene expressed? How do we make proteins out of gene? How is it expressed? Right? How do we make RNA out of it? How do we make mRNA, tRNA, rRNA out of it? And how do we regulate it? The lack of neurons, right? So all of this we're going to do over the course of the coming few lectures. 
So, one of the most important things that we have to define, and this is important for your board exams. Now, see, one more thing which will happen in my classes is they are not going to be uh, exclusively board classes or exclusively meet classes. Biology as a subject is very inclusive. So, when I teach you a concept, I'm going to build up that concept from scratch, right? That's how we're going to do it. We're going to build up a concept from the very basic level. So, when we build up a concept from the basic or from the scratch, we go up, up, up. So, while we're going up, these, this is when we reach a certain level, this is what comes in board exam when we started from scratch. And once we build up a concept and then we fundamentally do the intricate material of that concept, get into the tough parts of the concept. First, you build up a concept and then you get into, you break the concept and get into its nitty gritties. That is what is important from aims and need point of view. So we are not going to do only this and we're not going to do only this. It's going to be a very inclusive class. We build up from the scratch and go reach a certain level, which is important for board exam point of view. And then from here, we go a little up, a little deep to do the MCQ point of view. Done, everybody? So with that, let's start the class. Now, what is the requirement for a genetic material, right? We know that deoxyribonucleic acid is a genetic material. DNA is a genetic material. In some organisms, like the HIV virus, which is an AIDS question, meat question, the virus, the HIV virus, which is going to cause AIDS, in that RNA is a genetic material, right? How did we come to the DNA and RNA? I will just tell you. Over the next 15, 20 minutes, I will tell you that how did we reach that DNA is a genetic material or RNA is a genetic material? How did we reach this particular conclusion? I will just tell you, right? But first, what are the requirements of a genetic material? Any material, if I have to call DNA a genetic material, if I have to call RNA a genetic material, what are the requirements? Is that clear? What do I need in that genetic material? Number one, that genetic material should be able to replicate itself. This is a cell. Let's call this cell A. Cell A has to produce two more cells, cell B and cell C. Cell B has to produce two more cells. So in every generation, in every next generation, it has to give DNA. It has to give genetic material to the next baby. So it has to give the genetic material to the next generation. So the genetic material has to replicate itself. It has to make a copy of itself so that it can give it to the next offspring, the next generation. So that replication, that copying of genetic material happens in the cell cycle happens in the cell cycle. I'm also going to teach you, can anybody revise class 11th, remember class 11th and tell me which part of the cell cycle will DNA replication take place? Yes, yes, some of you are right. It is definitely the S phase, the synthesis phase of cell cycle. It is also a neat question, right? So, you know, my slides, my classes are going to be like this. I'm going to tell you a lot of extra information pertaining to the exams. So I'm going to tell you this is what is going to come in the exam. This is coming Nate. This is coming names. Right, everybody? All right. All right. Come, let's start. So the requirements of genetic material can come in board exams, all these four points. So first requirement is that the genetic material should be able to replicate itself. It should make a copy of itself so that it can give it to the next generation. In which stage does it make a copy of itself? The S phase. The genetic material should be stable. It should be very stable. It should not happen that when it is making a copy of itself, it is, it is becoming unstable. It is not giving the exact copy to the next generation. It is giving the wrong copy to the next generation. That should not happen. It should be very, very stable. It should be very stable. It should carry all the information. If cell A is giving it to cell B, cell B should receive all the information, which all proteins can it make, which all enzymes can it make, Right? Every, which all organs can it make? All information should be there in the genetic material. I repeat then, genetic material should be able to copy itself, replicate. Genetic material should be stable. Genetic material should carry all the information. And genetic material is a link between two generations. Between me and my parents, I look like my parents because they gave me the same genetic. You look like your parents. So it's a link between two generations. So the requirements of genetic material can come in board exams. The requirements are, you know, it should be able to replicate itself. It should be stable. It should carry biological information and it's a link. In which stage does it replicate itself? It replicates itself in the cell cycles. S phase, the synthesis phase of the cell cycle. Important, neat question. Right? Let's move on now. So 
DNA is a genetic mode. We know it now. It's a matter of fact statement. Narendra Modi is the prime minister of our country. We know it now. It's a very matter of fact statement. Yeah, Trump is a good, God save America, is the president of the United States of America. It's a matter of fact statement. DNA is a genetic material, is a matter of fact statement now. Earlier, when inventions were going on, when discoveries were going on, we did not know what is a genetic material. The world was divided. Somebody said, oh my, now listen to me. This is very interesting. Very interesting. Listen to me. Okay. What all do you see in a person? You see a person for the very first time. Let's take a celebrity. Let's take Sachin Tendulkar. Right? Although I'm not a big fan of cricket, but let's let's take Sachin Tendulkar. Right? So this particular person has... A height, he's a little short in height, right? Okay. Uh, he has hair, which are a little curly. Everybody's seen them, right? So he has an eye color. I'm not very sure about his eye color. He has a skin color, right? Yes, let's take another person now for one second. Let's take Mr. Narendra Modi, our prime minister, right? So Mr. Narendra Modi also has a particular height. He has he has hair which are gray now. Yes, everybody. He has a particular skin color. Now, if you compare Narendra Modi's skin color to Sachin Tendulkar's skin color, you will know there's a difference, right? They, Sachin Tendulkar, you can say, is a little fair. Narendra Modi, you can assume, is a little on the darker side compared to Sachin Tendulkar. Now you take another person, let's say Priyanka Chopra. Right? So when you have you have a person called Priyanka Chopra. She has a particular height again. She has a particular skin color again. She has a particular hair color again. She has a particular eye color again, right? Is that all clear to everybody? And then let's take somebody called Aishwarya Rai, who's very, very famous. And look at her eye color. Look at her hair color. Look at her skin color. So everybody is different. Why is everybody different? Everybody is different because of their... Genes, simple. I look a certain type, you look a certain type, the whole world looks a certain type, right? If you've taken lectures at Vedantu, Vamsi sir looks a certain type, and Anand sir looks different from Vamsi sir, and Pulkit sir is different from Anand sir and Vamsi sir, they're very different from me. So all of us are our own type. Now, what is there? It is genes. Now, but what we see, we see hair color, we see skin color, we see eye color, we see nose shape, ear shape. So what we see is basically proteins, don't we? Do you all agree with me or disagree with me? What we see is basically proteins, right, everybody? We see eye color, hair color, skin color, height. I'm, I'm very tall, I'm close to six feet tall, right? So what we see are proteins. So that's why 90% of the people at that time said that, listen, because proteins are giving us our features. Proteins are making us who we are. It is giving us a personality. Who is the genetic material? They said proteins are the genetic material. Everybody said, oh, no, no, no. There is no DNA, RNA. They said, no. Nobody knew. There was no microscope. Nobody, they said, no. What you see, you see eye color, hair color, skin color. You see genes. What are genes? Genes is this. Gene is this. They said protein is a genetic material. Nothing else is a genetic material. Who's a genetic material? They said proteins. There was another small group of scientists who said, no, 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 no. There is DNA and RNA which is making the proteins. It's like that. It's like I'll give you a simple classical example quickly. I, I don't, you know, let, let's go back 100 years. Let's go back even 50 years. 50 years ago, I tell a phone will come and I'll be able to talk to people. Let's go back to the year 1947. In 1947, I tell everybody, I believe me. Or 50 years ago, I would have told the world, hey, listen, I will send a rover to Mars. You know, now we are in, Elon Musk is even sending people to moon. But if 50 years ago, I tell, I, I, I'll make a rover and send it to Mars, they're like, this woman has gone mad. Yes or no? So at that time, everybody said, no, no, no. Who is the genetic material? Protein. Because that is what we see. We see it in eye color. We see it in hair color. We see it in skin. We see it everywhere. And when people said, no, no, no. DNA, RNA is a genetic material. They said, no. 
protein is the genetic material and there was a war which was happening between these two types of people one said dna rna one said protein why am i teaching you this because there were a lot of experiments which were done on this this is what i'm going to teach you today we are going to establish we are going to prove that no this is a genetic material for proving that for establishing that we have to do experiments and those experiments are favorite questions in neat so my dear children what is the context of the lecture the context of the lecture is that we have to prove that dna is a genetic material and not protein and for that we have to start with the history of the genetic material who said what where did it start from and finally we have to come to dna is the genetic material this entire history this entire story took lots of years lots and lots of time and in these years what was done were lots and lots and lots of experiments to prove it and these experiments are very very important because these experiments come as mcqs is the context clear what are we doing because in the textbooks it's just given like that you don't know why are you studying these experiments these experiments we study because we have to prove that nahi it's not proteins no 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 what is it it is a genetic material is the dna oblique the rna in some organisms but not the proteins and it took years of studies it took years of experiment to prove this is that clear my dear students so with that let's move on let's move on so dna is a genetic material first remember called frederick mischer was studying cells and he was specifically studying pus cells have you ever got a boil where pus comes out yes that yellow color is a cell i see a central material the central material is dark and dense and it's always acidic he said it's always acidic it's very very acidic and he called it nuclein what did he call it he said i don't know whether it's dna i don't know whether it's protein i don't know i don't care i i see something in the center that something in the center is dark it's dense it's acidic let me call it nuclein four points that's all so the first person to study our cells was a scientist called frederick mischer he said that in the center of the cell there is something which is dark and dense he said the dark and dense material is acidic he named it nuclein six points anyone can come in and say this who named nuclein frederick mischer where did you observe them our cells what was the nature of the nuclein acidic basic neutral none of the above acidic story finishes then came another scientist called frederick griffin very 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 important transforming principle very important from board exam point of view and very 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 important from mcq point of view let me take 10 minutes and explain this entire story to you very important right now make notes whatever i'm telling you whatever i'm writing down i want you to make notes on this transforming principle so many students after i after i after i finished the class so many students oh this is how it is we never understood we by heart it so let me explain it to you it will take time but this is very important from your mcq point of view transforming principle is like every second year one question will come every alternate year one main question will come so next 10 minutes can get you good four marks in your mcqs and definitely a main question in your board exams right so let's come to the experiment it's a very nice story listen to it who's doing it there's a scientist by the name of the frederick remains the same on huh? the frederick is same but this scientist is called frederick griffith write it down please with me copy it down with me sit with your papers pens and copy it down with me frederick griffith so he did an experiment and he discovered something which is called the tp what is tp that he discovered it is called the trans forming principle he discovered this what did he discover he discovered a transforming principle right tp transforming principle what did he do it's a very nice experiment listen to me carefully first of all he he defined a word this is a word that you need to remember it's a very important word he defined a word you know what is the word that he defined He defined a word which is called a virulence. Please copy with me side by side and understand virulence. What is virulence? It's a beautiful word. What does the word virulence mean? Anybody in the class? What is virulence? 
virulence means in very simple words very simple words disease yeah you are right some of you good 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 it's a disease causing ability good it's a disease causing ability bimari karne ki shamta how much disease can it cause a bacteria how much disease can it cause for example maldives iceland and pakistan randomly i have named four countries which of the following four which of the following four will india not like you will you think of it and like generally which which country's name will you hear and you will be like no i don't want to go there and probably i don't like the country that much i think pakistan because they're always at war with them they kill our people they kill our soldiers they spread terrorism in our country they attack our country like how they did in bombay yes how they attacked the taj mahal so they do all these kinds of things again and again yes or no you must have seen the surgical strike movie ads what happened in uri so they do all such things and we like no we don't like that country that much we don't have a problem with sri lanka we don't have a problem with maldives we don't so similarly a bacteria which can cause disease and we like oh my god this bacteria has come it can cause disease it is the virulence it is the ability to cause disease just like pakistan has an ability to trouble us it troubles us again and again similarly that bacteria which can cause a disease is virulent so bacteria which will cause a disease is virulent it is causing the disease and the bacteria which is not causing disease not causing disease it's not troubling us it's not causing any disease can i call it a virulent it's not causing a disease at all so let's call it a virulent done is that done everybody come on yes so bacteria which causes disease i call it virulent a bacteria which does not cause a disease i call it a virulent virulent a virulent done let me go to the end of the class now so that i can write everything here and it will be saved also for you and then we'll go back to the first slides right so let's quickly do it virulence is a disease causing ability let me quickly write it down what is virulence my dear children it is the ability it is the disease it is a disease causing ability that is virulence right it is a disease causing ability on the basis of the disease causing ability if ability is there to cause a disease it causes disease a bacteria i call it virulent right and if it does not ability is negative it does not cause a disease not causes or does not cause disease yeah not causes disease is like english wrong so you could say does not cause disease one and the same thing we call it a virulent theek hai bachcho that's very simple i hope everybody this is clear now now we have to understand that why 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 one is virulent why and the other is why should pakistan want to trouble us why can't it live happily like a nice neighbor why does it want to trouble us because it's 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 jealous of our people it's jealous of you and me it's jealous of our economic progress it's jealous of our super uh, economy is jealous of you know our progress as a country that we are making that's why it wants to harm us why is this virulent and why is this a virulent we have to understand that dekho beta very simple jo bhi aadmi bomb suppose there's a, there's a mall and somebody wants to drop a bomb there right so there's a big mall and somebody wants to go and drop a bomb i'm so sorry why am i taking such such bombing examples no but i don't know the examples are just coming the analogies are coming like that in my mind i should have taken some some little non violent examples but never mind yes okay so then yeah so that's what i was saying why if a person is there and he wants to drop a bomb Will he take the bomb in his hand and go? I have, I have come with a bomb. Tell me, a person wants to drop a bomb. Will he take the bomb in his hand and go? Listen, this is the bomb. I want to drop it. No, he'll hide it. Yes or no? 
he'll hide it somewhere inside some suitcase in his bag you've seen those movies and all and that person is wearing a jacket full of bomb yeah they hide it so virulent has to cause a disease simple so because it has to cause a disease will it hide so that it can enter the body and cause disease tell me yes because what does our body have to protect us what will our body have to protect us come on tell me my old students if somebody is attending the class we are doing human health and disease now so what does our body have to protect us wbcs white blood cells i will call it immunity so our immunity is like the soldier in the border do, 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 do. yes or no she is trying to kill anybody is trying to enter the border yes or no yes absolutely so the virulent if it has to enter our body and cause disease it has to hide itself so that it cannot cause the disease simple it has to hide otherwise our body will come to know i'll give you another simple classical example i i there, there's no racialism here there's there's no um, it's just a very very simple example that i'm giving so please don't take it as a, as a religious example or something like that i'm sure all of you have seen burkha right it's just a very it's a very example which is pertaining to this particular thing that's why i always take this example i'm sure all of you have seen burkha we call it hijab also right okay so you must have seen there are some people who are covered from head to toe in a burqa or a hijab right so when they are covered can you see what is inside can you see how the person is looking how how uh, what's the color of the person what are the eye color of the person what is the hair color of the person how the person is looking will you be able to take a photograph of that person keep an image in your mind no because that person is covered yes or no and for that matter Uh, sometimes even a boy can wear a burqa just to hide or a girl can wear a burqa can you can you find out what is inside even what sex is inside if the person is covered from head to toe will you be able to find out so if you can't find out and you have to identify now suppose let's take it let's make it more interesting suppose there are 10 people and out of them one person is a criminal you want to find them out but all 10 people are wearing burqa and this one criminal you want to attack him and kill him but all 10 people are wearing burqa all 10 of them answer a simple question will you be able to identify the criminal and attack him simple question will you be able to identify the criminal and attack him i have a very simple question for you yes all of you are right obviously the answer is i can't identify him if i can't identify him i can't attack him why can't i identify him because he is hidden where is he hidden yes now listen to me there is this bacteria which wants to enter your body and upon entering the body it wants to kill the body so to do it this bacteria has to hide so how will this bacteria hide this bacteria will have a covering outside just like a burqa so when this bacteria covers itself you tell me one simple thing can the body see the bacteria when it is under the covering can the body see the bacteria simple question i have a very simple question for you can the body see the bacteria see the body can't see the bacteria can the body attack the bacteria if you can't see can you attack the bacteria without seeing and what will the bacteria do will it just sit there in fact the bacteria will attack the body and cause what so can i call a bacteria which has covering very 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 important can i call a bacteria which has covering a virulent bacteria because a virulent bacteria has a cover because it is hidden because it can't get attacked 
what? Why? Body, because it is a protective cover, is there? It but can attack body. Therefore, it can cause disease. It can cause disease because it can attack the body. I call it virulent. Is this clear? There's a bacteria. The bacteria is covered on the outside. Because the bacteria is covered on the outside, the body can't see it. Because the body can't see it, the body can't attack it. Because the body can't see and can't attack it, but the bacteria can attack the body from the cover. It is hidden. It's like a bunker where the person is hiding, and you can't see it, but the person can see when the person shoots at you. Is that clear? Is that clear, my dear children? So there are there is a bacteria, and that bacteria is hidden in the cover, and that cover. The body can't see the bacteria inside the cover, and the body can't do anything but the bacteria kills. That bacteria is called virulent. This cover is a very soft and smooth cover. It's a very soft, smooth, jelly-like cover, gel-like cover. So we call such bacteria as smooth. Which type of bacteria? Smooth. Let's come back to the experiment. So this guy called Frederick Griffith took a bacteria which is called as Diplococcus pneumoniae. It's also known as this bacteria is also known as Diplococcus because inside one cover there are two bacteria. Diplococcus. Di means two. There are two round bacteria. It's also known as AKA. Also known as also known as AKA. Streptococcus pneumoniae. Also known as Streptococcus pneumoniae. So this bacteria has got two types. What are the types called strains? What are strains? Types. It's got two types, two strains. Very simple. One strain is called rough, and another strain is called smooth. The smooth strain has a covering outside. Smooth. It has a covering outside. What is the covering made up of? The covering is made up of jelly. It's made up of gel, right? So because it is under the gel, it's under the smooth covering of the gel. Therefore, the body can't see it. Rough has no covering. Body can see it. So rough. Is a virulent. It cannot cause disease because why is it a virulent, my dear children? Because there is no covering. If there is no covering, body can see it. If body can see it, body kills it. Therefore, it can't cause disease. Whatever can't cause disease is a virulent. A virulent means can't cause disease. This is just the opposite. It has a covering. That is why it is called smooth. What is the covering made up of? It's made up of gel. That's why it's smooth and soft like a gel. So because the covering is there, body can't see it. Body can't see it. Therefore. Body can't kill it. Body can't kill it, but big but it kills body. Therefore, it is called as virulent. It causes disease. It is called as virulent. Are the two forms clear to everybody? Are you ask anybody? Most of the people cannot explain it to you. What is rough and what is smooth? What is the function of a capsule? What is virulent? What is a virulent? So what all have we read till now? What is virulent? What is a virulent? What is rough? What is smooth? Which is the bacteria on the Frederick Griffith did experiment? He did experiments on diplococci pneumonia or streptococci pneumonia. The diplococci pneumonia or the streptococci pneumonia is a bacteria which causes lung disease, causes pneumonia. There are two strains of the bacteria. There is a rough strain and the smooth strain. The rough strain does not have a cover. 
covering, therefore it is avirulent because the body kills it. Whereas a smooth strain has a covering, it cannot kill the body. Uh, it cannot, uh, the body can't see, it, therefore the body can't kill it, but it can kill the body. That is a smooth strain. So now let us come to the experiment which he did. Very important. This is called the transformation experiment. Very, very, very important. Lots of MCQs come on this. So my dear children, I hope it's clear to you that how I'm going to teach you. Every word of the textbook will be explained to you. Now see, aims and meet are not very tough exams to crack. But the point is in biology, you need to understand it. You can't buy hard this question because they will ask you a question on capsule. They will ask you questions on virulence. What is virulent? What is avirulent? So for you to understand how virulence is caused is very important with that capsule. And now the classes have just started. It is the first 40 minutes module that I'm taking. That's why I'm going slow. I'm teaching you basics. With it, we will now slowly go to the higher levels. When I teach you human health and disease, I will teach virulence in detail. I will teach immunity in detail. At that time, to understand virulence and immunity in detail, it is very important that the basics are clear. So let's now quickly come to the transformation experiment, which he did. In the transformation experiment, he took a mouse, right? I'm sorry, it doesn't look like a mouse. Let's make a tail to make it more realistic, right? So let's take a mouse. Now it's still looking like a mouse. So he took a mouse. Now in the mouse, he gave R strain. Tell me what will happen to the mouse. R strain. R. What will happen to the mouse? Tell me. First experiment, R strain. What will happen to the mouse? Come on. It will live. Why will it live? Because R strain is avirulent. It can't make capsule. It does not have the genes to make capsule. Can't make capsule. So the mouse will live happily ever after. Okay. Next. This is first experiment of transformation. Next experiment, second point of transformation. Again, takes a mouse. <laughs> Gives it S. Smooth strain. What is the smooth strain? Come on, I've just taught you in detail. It is virulent. Yes, it's virulent. Poor guy. So what happened to the mouse? Oh, it's going to die. Are you getting my point, everybody? It's going to die. Why? Because it's the S strain. So this is how the bacteria is with a cover. The body can't see it. It will attack the body. Third. Third experiment. What did he do? So let's revise the first and second first. Quickly, quickly, quickly. The first one, you give R strain, mouse, lives. Second time, you give S strain, mouse, dies. Third time, you know what you do? You give a heat killed S. Take the S, heat it. Are you getting my point, everybody? Take the S and heat. So we call it heat killed. What happens in heat killed S? What happens? Anybody? It's very interesting. What will happen when you heat it? What will happen? Come on. You will destroy the capsule. Simple. You heat it, you destroy the capsule. So when you destroy the capsule, my dear children, now what happens? Come on, come on, come on. Yes, you're all answering. That's nice. Yes, yes, yes. Now, no capsule, obviously. Yeah. So the body can see bacteria. Therefore, body kills bacteria. And therefore, bacteria dies. But body lives. Simple. Is that clear? So you make a mouse again. You give it heat killed S. It's S. But it is heat killed. So this mouse will live. And now... Let's come to the last part of the experiment, which was what he did, which changed the entire way we look at the experiment. It's very simple. So now what he did, he took a heat killed S. Is it clear? You take a heat killed S. 
and you combine it with a live ah. Uh. What is the name of the experiment? We've come to the last five, ten minutes. Now. Full attention, full josh, last five, ten minutes. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It's a very important take home concept for today. Now, come on. Live R kya kar sakta hai? can't make Sara Kahani, the entire Kahani is of capsule. It can't make capsule. Therefore, body sees it. Therefore, body kills it. Simple. Very simple. If it's a big if, 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 if we remove corruption from our country. Because I'm a very patriotic person. Nation comes first any time and every time. For me, it's like that. So if we remove corruption from our country, if will anything stop us from becoming a superpower? Tell me. If we can control our population and if we can remove corruption from our country, tell me, guys. Will there be anything that will stop us from becoming a superpower? Tell me. Nothing will be unstoppable. Yes or no? Come on. Yes or no? Absolutely. Yes or no? Absolutely, my dear children. Absolutely. Yes. So therefore, agar mein live R ko, agar mein live R ko, kisi tarah capsule de deti hu. If it can make capsule, tell me just one thing. If it can make capsule, will it live? Yes. Because then it will hide. It will attack the body. Hiding, it will attack the body just like Pakistan hides and attacks us. Got my point. So therefore, when we take a heat killed S, its capsule destroy ho gaya. Heat killed S me kya kiya? The capsule is destroyed. But DNA is there. Capsule DNA is there. This DNA goes to R. And what will the DNA carry to the R? Information. You have heat killed the S. You have destroyed the capsule. You have destroyed the capsule. But DNA is there. The DNA will go to R. And what will it do to the R? Hey, listen, R, come here. I'll tell you how to make capsule. Make now. It's like a recipe. Hey, capsule banana is so easy. I'll tell you, you make. So what will the R do? The R will get transformed. It has got the recipe. To make capsule, it'll get transformed and do what? And make capsule. So once it makes capsule, R becomes what? Yes. So when I take a mouse and I inject a heat killed S plus Ah, heat killed S sends information to R. This is called as transformation. And R is able to make a capsule. So R gets transformed to S. And this poor mouse dies. When I inject this, is that clear? So let's quickly revise it. Fast, 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 fast. Let's start with the first one. First one, you give mouse R strain, mouse lives. S strain, mouse dies. Heat killed S, capsule gone, mouse will live. Heat killed S plus R. R is getting transformed. R is receiving information. R is becoming smart. R is making capsule, and the mouse dies. So this experiment was done by Frederick Griffith. This experiment was called the transformation experiment or the transformation principle. He said that DNA has the information to make capsule. DNA has the ability to transform or change the cell of a bacteria. So DNA is the boss, but we were still not able to prove it. We were not able to prove it. We just said that DNA has information. He said, Are information is in DNA. What is the information? He said, he said, I don't know in detail. What is it? Let me call it transforming principle. Let me call it transforming principle. And now we have to prove 
this transforming principle is it dna or is it a protein because he said that this transforming principle is coming from the middle in the middle both are there in the middle dna is also there in the middle protein is also there both are there both of them are so we have to find out ki bhai is it dna or protein but he said it is in the middle first first person to say it was frederick mischel said in the center acidic material is there then griffith said yes in the center transforming principle is there so now in the subsequent classes i'm going to prove to you that the transforming principle is nothing but the means not the protein and for that we have to do a lot of experiments to prove it yes we'll have to do the hershey chase experiment we have to do every mcleod mccarty experiment so in the subsequent classes i'm going to prove it to you that the genetic material is indeed dna with the experiments because these experiments are very very important transforming principle is a major mcq for neat right so now you know what is virulent you know what is a virulent you know what is rough strain you know what is smooth strain you know the properties of the genetic material you know the first person to find it was was who was frederick mischer and after that the person to talk about it was who was frederick griffith and frederick griffith did the transforming in the next class i'm going to go in detail and prove that dna is the genetic material and not anything else and then we will start the most interesting part of the class which is the properties of dna how is the dna made up of what is it made up of all the constituents of dna then we are going to come to replication how the dna divides how the dna forms rna which is called as transcription and how it finally forms the proteins which is called as trans so my dear students i had a fabulous time teaching you like a lovely 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 time teaching i had such a lovely time teaching you explaining this entire experiment to you i hope you also had a wonderful time studying with us at vedantu let me tell you vedantu is a platform wherein you can sit in the confines of your home in the comfort of your home in whichever part of the world you are and you could uh help us allow us to be able to reach you and teach you with amazing passion yes my dear children so with that i sign off for today looking forward to see you in subsequent lectures to a engaging amazing and interesting session on genetics so that's bye bye from my side i again i'm dr wani i hope to see you all in the next few sessions bye bye have a good day ahead and see you in next sessions bye please share your valuable feedback please let me know if there are some other topics that you would want me to do right bye students have a good day ahead